Welcome everyone. This is Sean from Trigger Precision Machine with episode two of the 10 part breakdown series. Yesterday we reviewed a lightweight precision hunting rifle. So today we're gonna to break down a long range hunting rifle. I mentioned in the previous video that I primarily hunt in the Western states. So long range shots are a reality and being able to successfully make long range shots opens up a lot of hunting opportunities for us out here. The rifle we're breaking down today is another custom built specifically for elk hunting in open country. It's chambered in 300 Norma Magnum and tips the scales at 15 and a half pounds as you see it here with a loaded magazine. This is not a light rifle to carry around by any means and I didn't really have that intention when I built it, but in all honesty, it does not carry too bad. So we'll get right into it. So once again, we'll start here at the muzzle end. I run an American Precision Arms Fat Bastard muzzle brake to take the recoil down and make this a very, very soft shooting rifle. I have no problem spotting my hits through the scope. It's really, really that nice to shoot. And we'll move our way down the barrel. This is a 28 inch overall heavy Palma contour Bart line, one and nine twist. It's got a custom Cerakote job on it. It's a tinted OD green Cerakote. The chamber was throated to accommodate the heavier 215 to 245 grain class 30 caliber bullets and maximized case capacity while still being able to be magazine fed. The action is a Defiance Deviant Tactical set up for the larger Lapua case head cartridges like the 300 Norma Magnum and the 338 Lapua Magnum. It's your standard two lug 90 degree bolt throw action and it is as rock solid as they get. So here we are back at the middle of the rifle. For the optic, I'm using a Night Force ATAC R 5 to 25 by 56 millimeter. This is a second focal plane version with the MOAR or more reticle. For this rifle, I almost always dial my bullet drop using the elevation turret, make my wind adjustments with either the windage turret if the winds are consistent, or I use my target size as a reference for a hold off if I'm in a hurry. I switch back and forth between no reticle scopes and MOA reticle scopes with no real issues and the same with first and second focal plane scopes. So I'll have a separate video later on rifle scope selection, but suffice to say good glass is very important, especially when you're trying to successfully make ethical long range shots on animals in the field. So the rifle stock I used in this build is a Manners PRS2. This has the Manners integrated mini chassis and the carbon fiber shell. And it also wears a AccuShot Atlas Picatinny rail up front that lets me quick detach my Atlas bipod and shave a few ounces off the rifle if I'm trying to get a little bit lighter. So we'll jump back to the rear of the rifle and here on the adjustable cheek piece, I keep a dope card out to a thousand yards with wind calls for five mile an hour winds and mover calls for three mile an hour moving targets and drop increments in an MOA format. So here we'll move down to the trigger. Once again, I'm using a Timney Calvin Elite. This trigger just happens to be a single stage trigger and it is tuned down to about a pound and a half, which is just about where I like it for this rifle. To the right of the trigger, you'll see two cartridges on the granite table. So the left cartridge is the 300 Norma Magnum and to the right of that's a standard 308 Winchester. So that gives you a little bit of a comparison to show just how big this cartridge is. And then I'm using standard Accuracy International 338 Lapua CIP length magazines for this thing. So it gives me a little bit of extra length for those longer, heavier bullets. And as I mentioned before, this rifle is set up to shoot the heavy 30 caliber bullets. So the load that I settled on uses a 245 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limits Elite Hunter. And this rifle pushes that bullet to nearly 2,950 feet per second. This cartridge carries a tremendous amount of energy downrange for larger animals and offers truly impressive external ballistics. So engaging steel targets at ranges in the neighborhood of 2,000 yards and beyond all comes down to shooter skill. So the rifle and the cartridge is in no way a limiting factor. And just show you guys what kind of accuracy this rifle is capable of. There is a proofing target that I shot after I did the load development. And that's three shots at 100 yards with the 245 grain burger bullet. And it's well under a quarter inch. And that's pretty common for this rifle. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoy the show and stick around for what we have coming for the rest of the breakdown series. Take it easy. We'll see you next time.